we go. Today we're going to start with solving rational equation 7.5. We'll actually finish up the conversation on this on Monday. All right, so number one, we've talked about it a little. Example one here, I want you to just go ahead and solve that problem like you think you should. Okay? You have the skills, you just have to apply them in a new way. Okay, what do we do first? Yes? Uh, you cross multiply. That times that, that times that. So you get 3 times 4x plus 5 is equal to 9 times x plus 1. So it's a proportion. You just cross multiply. What if you, what if you think that like, you did multiple multiplications? Yeah, it'd take a lot longer. Yep, same thing. It would work. Take longer. Okay. Hey, um... Uh, from here, you have two options. You can distribute. How many of you distributed? Or you can divide both sides by 3. Right? So I'm going to do what I think is a little faster, which is to divide both sides by 3. If you distributed, that's okay. You'd be left with 4x plus 5 equals. That would be 1 and that would be 3. So you get 3x plus 2. Or 3, excuse me. All right, from there, subtract 3x, subtract 5, you get x equals negative 2. Now, in terms of restrictions on these, really our restriction is x can't equal negative 1, and it can't equal negative 5 fourths. Does it equal one of those? Did x equal negative 1 or 5, negative 5 fourths? No, therefore we're okay. Okay, to check your work, you just plug it back in. Negative 2 plus 1 is 1, or negative 1. You get negative 3 on this side. And negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 5 is negative 3. And 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. So they are equal. Any questions? All right, yeah. What were you trying to do? Let me see. Can we put it up here? Yeah. All right. So you're trying to find the common denominator? Yeah. Okay. You guys, you can do these by finding the common denominator. It takes too long. And you will not finish your test or your quizzes on time. So if you're doing that process, move to cross multiply. Okay. Um, however, on this, 4x plus 5x plus 1, 4x plus 5x plus 1, uh, if you're finding the common denominator, that would give you 12x plus 15, and you multiply this by 4x plus 5, or no, x plus 1, so 9x plus 9. Then I multiply out the denominator. So you subtract 9. Yeah. Ah. Uh. So right here, you divide by negative 3, not 6. Okay, so you made it almost to the end and then messed up. That's okay. All right. Hey, guys, I, I will say you can find a common denominator. It will take too long, though. Okay, so if you did that process, that's okay. I asked you to figure out how to solve it, but this is much faster. And if you're given a bunch of those types of problems and you're doing that laborsome task, um, you won't have time. Okay, you'll, you'll be like hating me and you'll be hating math and everything else. You'll be like stupid McCoy and be, you like, you know, like getting grumpy face about it and stuff. It's not my fault. I'm just telling you you should do it this way. Okay? Thank you for sharing that, Kai. All right, example two. Let's go ahead and read it to yourself, please. Not like a story to the class. I'm good. Now, if you're anything like me, the first thing you would say is, huh? Okay? You'd be like, what? What are we talking about here? Okay, so it's important for you to know a few different things. Um, as you're reading this problem, I, unless you are someone who um, just mixes metals for fun and you know what an alloy is, you, they start giving you a bunch of background information. So I'm going to put up my sheet here on 
uh, information on how I would actually go through this problem. It'll look very similar to your sheet at the beginning here. Okay. Um, so an alloy is formed by mixing two or more metals. Now that you have that background information, it's fine for you to just say, that's swell, thank you for sharing and moving on with life. Then. Okay, now you know. Okay, sterling silver is an alloy. Okay, so we have sterling silver composed of that much silver and that much copper by weight. You have 15 ounces of 800 grade silver. Now, for those of you who don't know a lot about silver, I don't. Okay, I had really never heard of 800 grade silver. This 800 is not a value we use. It is like a name. If we want, we could rename this to Neato Burrito Silver. Okay, this is 15 ounces of Neato Burrito Silver. All right, or really the name is 800 grade silver. Okay, but if the 800 confuses you, think of it as Neato Burrito Silver. Okay, which is 80% silver and 20% copper. Notice different amounts. This one is a pure silver because it's 92 and a half versus 80. Okay. How much pure silver, that means completely pure silver, actual silver, 100% silver, should you mix with 800 grade or Neato Burrito silver to make sterling silver? Okay, so you have now pure silver, 100% silver, Neato Burrito silver, our current silver, and the silver we want, sterling silver. Okay. Now that right there could be quite confusing, especially if you are not into silver and copper, um, or you're like, I really don't care. Um, so let's let's think about it this way. First, you you have a desired amount of silver. Okay. The needed percent of copper to make sterling silver. What percent is needed to make sterling silver? What percent of copper? 7.5%. The word percent means per 100. So how can you write 7.5% as a ratio? 7.5 over 100. Very cool. All right. Now, we also have a current weight of copper in the mixture. What is the current weight of our copper in this mixture? Let's so talk about it. Figure out the current weight of the copper. Okay, so I guess it would probably be important for you to know like what the current silver is we're dealing with. Just hearing some of you talking. The the current silver we have is the 800, the Neato Burrito silver, right? What is the current weight of that? 15 ounces, and how much copper is in it? So it's 20% of, of 15 which is about three ounces, right? So the current weight of the copper in the mixture is 0 0.2 times 15, which we know will be three, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. We want it to be, we want it to be what? We want it to be 7.5, okay? Out of a, if we're comparing the amount of copper, right? It's seven point, we want it to be 7.5 to make sterling silver. It's currently 3. Well, you also need the same denominators. This is 100. That represents the total in sterling silver. 7.5% of 100%. of 100% there. The amount. Whereas this is, our current weight is 15. Our new weight needs to include X. Now, what is X? Yeah, it's the pure silver you're mixing in. It's the thing you're adding to it. Okay? So our total weight of the new mixture is going to be that 15 plus X. Okay? 
okay so you're adding in some pure silver that's what our x equals now i kind of gave that away by having x up there but okay it's also right here but that's not supposed to be it's just like a, i just like draw x's for fun just for fun all right that's still fun okay i want you guys now to solve for x all right been around seems like a lot of you have it done there seven and a half times one and twelve or seven point five times fifteen is one twelve point five and seven point five times x and then one hundred times this is three is three hundred we solve we get twenty five ounces of silver how many got it okay what kind of questions we got Hey, pretty good. You guys, I I, prom I promised that when I read that problem first, I had to reread it after I said, huh? And then I had to reread it again after I said, huh, again. And then I started, like, deciphering it. I do not have the great odds that I can call and ask about that problem. Okay, I, I am not a person who sits around home mixing alloys to form metals. Okay? I don't even sit around school doing that. So, um... Just so you know, we'll try to decipher it the best we can. Hey, um, there's some problems on the bottom you can do if you want a little more practice. But uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and turn the page. Okay. All right. Example three. I want you to tell your neighbor how you're going to do letter A there. There are a couple different ways you could approach it. There are a couple ways. Let me tell you the two ways that I would probably not use. However, you could use. They are valid ways. The first way, I recognize, well, first thing, no matter which way you use, I recognize the common denominator is 4x. Just so we know, that is the common denominator. Okay? Just set it there just so we know. Okay? 4x. Now, one process, someone pointed out last period was, hey, that has an x and that has an x. They're common already, so I could just subtract 5 over x over here. I get negative 14 over x, and then I have a proportion that I can cross multiply and divide. That is one way. Pretty valid. It's probably the second way I would do these. The way I would not do these is the way most of you did them, is to find the common denominator for each and make this like 5 over 4, or excuse me, 20 over 4x, and 7x over 4x, or excuse me, yeah, 7x over 4x, and negative 36 over 4x. Now, how many did that? Okay, please do not erase your work and scribble out and draw sad faces. All right? So, that is... By the way, that is a valid way. That is fine if you did it that way. The fast way. The common denominator is 4x. I am going to be a fraction eliminator. Okay, I am going to multiply this side by 4x, the common denominator, and this side by 4x, the common denominator. Now, by doing that, let, let's be extremely clear what you're doing. Okay, because it's easy to just copy my work and go, oh, okay, and then have no idea why you're doing it. So let's be clear. We're gonna, I'm going to show it on the first one here. When I multiply 4x by 5 over x, I am really doing 4x over 1 times 5 over x. I make that a fraction. Okay, what happens? Cross, cancel, and reduce first. Those cancel. I'm left with 20. The fraction is gone. All right, any questions what I just did there? Not magic. Okay, I then go 4x times 7 over 4. So 4x over 1 times 7 over 4. What cancels? A 4. What do you remain with? The x and the 7 is 
7x. So for those of you who are like, well, Mr. McCoy, I got those same top numbers in my denominator. I just have a denominator. Okay, that's true. All right, we're just getting rid of the denominators. Okay, so this 4x times negative 9 over x. So that's 4x over 1 times negative 9 over x. What cancels? dx, and you're left with the 4 times negative 9. So notice by doing that, by multiplying by 4x, you eliminate the fractions. You're just left with a linear or a two-step equation. Okay? Subtract 20. Divide by 7. <laughs> x is negative 8. What are the restrictions here? What can x not be? Zero. Is it zero? No. So we're okay there. Now you could always plug it in and check it as well. It's always a good strategy. Make sure that each side of the fract or equation is the same. Okay. Now how many of you can explain to your friend in another class who says, why do you multiply by the common denominator? How many of you can explain why you do that? Okay, this is why right here. That's you're showing you're showing why. Okay? All right. Wow. Riley, that's pretty good. All right. Wow. All right. Letter Did everyone catch Riley's joke? Yeah. It's really good. That means Riley, you are you've been in my class for too long. I said this is Y, and he said no, that's X. It's pretty good. All right, letter B. Everyone, try letter B, please. Okay, to get you started, just to make sure, what's our common denominator here? x minus 5 times x. You can't, remember, this is all together. Okay? So, and I'm going to leave it in that form. And you guys, by the way, when I usually show this, I don't, I usually don't make two sets like I did here. I just make one and I, and I only put it once. I say I'm multiplying by x times x minus 5. Okay? And so, and I really usually don't go through this process on the side. I just, I just think to myself, look, that's over 1. So when I bring that in here, what part cancels? The x. So what am I left with? 3 times x minus 5. And usually, yes, I'd just say 3x minus 15. But for what we're doing, I'm trying to show the pieces here. And here to here, what cancels? The x minus 5, so I'm left with 8x. And here, what cancels? Nothing, right? It's 1 times that, which is that. What's that? Yeah, this is a minus 8x right here. So if it makes it easier, you can just say plus negative 8. Yeah. Don't forget about those minuses. So if it helps you, write that as plus and minus up there. All right, so you don't forget. Any questions up to there? Yeah, question? We're good? Okay. So this is x squared minus 5x. Minus 8x equals 3x minus 15. Put all the pieces together. I have negative 5x, negative 8x, and I'm going to subtract over another 3x. That's a grand total of negative 16x. The x squared minus 16x, and then I'm adding 15 over. It's quadratic, but it's an easy quadratic. Just factor it, that becomes 
Uh, it would be x minus 15 and x minus 1, yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. x minus 15, x minus 1. And so that means x is 15 or x is 1. Now the question is, are any of those restrictions? No, that restriction of 0 and 5, however, neither are 0 and 5, so we're good to go. Always can check your work by plugging them back in and making sure that this side of the frat or equation is equal to that side of the equation. If you plug them back in, they both should work. Okay, questions? You guys, this, this book likes to ask to, you to solve in different ways, and you get the same place. I am fine with you just using one process, okay? So it should be a value to be able to look at problems and figure out where their errors were, but I'm fine with you just using one process on it. Okay, one last problem. Example four. There's some practice problems if you'd like for those, but example four, there you go. Tell your neighbor how that, that one's different than the other ones we've done. And I'm going to give you more time on it, but how is this one different? Come on, there, there's one new step involved here. What is it? Raise your hand, please. What's the one new step? Never mind. Huh. Huh? Crickets, man. What's, uh, what's the one new step? Oh, you can factor it. Faith? Well done. Hey, I had faith in you guys. Okay. All right. Hey, finish it up. Hey, how many made it that far? Okay, make sure you have the minus, right? Think of it that way. Got the X there. Yeah, I've done this problem twice, well, actually a couple times, more than twice. But um, I each time I forgot the X right here. It's four X times three, twelve X. Okay, don't forget that X. Okay, how many made it that far? Yeah, what's the first thing there? Good, factor of two out. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, you got to move. You're subtracting 18 over. Yeah. Okay. Two things that multiply to make 18. Okay, and add to 3. So for those of you who have forgotten factoring, Okay, so that equals x plus 6, x minus 3. Make sure you divide by your a term, which is 2. So x is negative 3 or 3 halves. Okay, now now before we get to um, what Haley's trying to yell out here, okay, before we get there, um, you guys, I, I have been so hard on you this year about, or not hard on you, but, but getting on you about get to factored form, get to factored form. When you're solving, the reality is we really don't need this step, right? Because, I mean, you're finding what, I mean, what makes that zero? Positive three halves. And what makes that zero? Well, this reduces to three over one, so it's negative three. I mean, really, if you're not going to use the quantities, then going from here to here is an extra step. Just get your answers from this. You guys clear on that? Okay, and Haley's getting really upset that I wrote down the number, what number? Negative three. And so how come? Good. Yeah, negative three is a restriction right here and here. Yes, very angry. Don't want angry. You don't want Haley angry. Okay, so that's a restriction. Therefore, X can only be three halves. Oh, yes. Pretty neato, huh? Hey. That negative 3 we call extraneous. It's an extraneous solution. Full word, right? All right. Very good. Any questions? A couple extra problems. You need them there.